Good morning and welcome to the service with the difference. It is the 4th of April 2023. It is Tuesday of Holy Week and throughout this Holy Week we are looking at the vows that Jesus makes as he fulfills his, his vow of love for us. Um, through Lent we have looked at the vows we make to God. We have said, God, I love you and my love looks, looks, looks like me turning away from everything that is not of you, turning towards everything that is of you. I will repent of sin and turn from evil. I will trust in you as my Lord and Savior, and I will serve you. I will obey you, and I will serve you in the church and in the world. And we, we read this week from Palm Sunday through to Easter Sunday, we are looking at the bar that Jesus makes as he reads from, from, from Isaiah chapter 61. And we find this, this, this in Luke chapter 4 from verse 18 to verse 19, where, where Jesus has said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Um, because he has anointed me, God has set me aside to the task of preaching good news to, to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to, to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And so today we are looking at how Jesus has, is fulfilling his vow of love for us by preaching good news to, to the poor. Today we are reading from Psalm 71. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 14 where the psalmist is, is saying to God, Please don't forget me when I am old. You have been faithful to me all my life. I have served you all my life. Please just remember me in my struggle. Remember me in, in my age. And then we're going to be reading from Isaiah chapter 49. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 7. It's another psalm in Isaiah that, that speaks of the servant of the Lord. How from before his birth, the Lord had called the servant. And again, we, 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 we recognize the prophecy of Jesus in the psalm. Um, from before his birth, he had been called. The Lord has trained him, has protected him while he has done this training. Um, because he has set him apart to, to call the people of Israel, the Jews, back to God. Not just them, but to, to proclaim salvation for, for all of creation, for all of God's people. And so he has trained him in that work. And the word that he has given him is like a sharpened sword, like a, like a, like a shiny arrow. Um, he has been sharpened for the work that God has set before him. And then we're going to be reading from 1 Corinthians 1. We're going to read from verse 18 to verse 31. Where Paul speaks about who Christ is. Christ is the wisdom of God and Christ is the power of God. Um, he has come to proclaim righteousness, to, to make us holy, to, to bring redemption. That's, that's what Christ um, was sent to do. That's, that was the task that he was set aside to do. And then we're going to be reading from John chapter 12. We're going to read from verse 20 to, to verse 36. It is where the Greeks come to Andrew and, to, and, and then Andrew goes to Philip. They're saying we want to meet with Jesus and then Jesus speaks about himself being a seed and that seed needs to go into the ground because if it doesn't die to, to what it is, um, it is unable to produce the fruit that is bursting to come from it. And so speaking of himself as he needs to die to this world in order to bring new life. To, to all of us in order to be raised from the dead and from there to draw us all into the kingdom of, of God. And so again, I'm going to ask that you put this on pause as you read through those readings. And as you read through them, we give God thanks for them. And we pray that he will bless them to us as we reflect on them in, in this moment. And so as, as I said earlier, Jesus has stated in Luke chapter 4 from verse 18 to 19, how he is going to fulfill his bar of love that God has empowered him to do because the spirit of the Lord is on him and that God has tasked him to do because he has anointed him. And so in Isaiah, we, we read how God has prepared his servant to bring his people back to himself. And it's not just the Jews, it, it is to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. You know, he has made his mouth like a sharpened sword, like a polished arrow. He, his servant is going to proclaim his message without twists, without turns, without without creating obstacles, but but removing obstacles, he is going to proclaim the good news to the poor, even if it is offensive to 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 the powerful, even if it is offensive to to the wise. He has come to preach the good news, and the good news that Jesus is preaching is that the kingdom of God is available to all people. Repent, he says, 
and, and believe the good news. The good news is that you don't have to earn the love of God. You don't have to labor to receive God's favor. You already have his love. You, you have his favor already. Living in his love and being in the right place to receive his favor, obviously that's a different conversation. We're going to get to that now. But God's love and God's favor is, is available to all people. The kingdom of God is available to all people. God wants you home, and God has done everything possible for you to come home. The door, the door is open, the obstacles are cleared, the invitation is sent, the table is prepared. It is sadly true that not everybody will accept this invitation because they still can't accept that union with God could be so easily, or, or they, they, they still don't care about union with God because, you know, they still believe they know, know better than God. In fact, we even go so far as to convince ourselves that, that God doesn't exist. And throughout the Old Testament, we, we read of how the Israelites could never quite understand the invitation that God was extending. You know, not only did they not understand it, but in their arrogance and in their foolishness, they made it, they made it harder for others to, to, to get the invitation. You know, much like we do today, because we're, we're still the same people struggling with, with the same power issues. You know, we, we don't love perfectly. And so we struggle to accept that somebody could love us perfectly. When, when God extends that invitation to us, our natural response is to ask, so, so what does God want from me in return? And God's invitation is, is not a bribe. God is not bartering for anything. God is not trying to carry favor. God is not looking for favor from you. It's an invitation of love from the Father. The good news sounds foolish to those who believe they are wise. Paul speaks of this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and he, and he is saying that even if, if it is that God is being foolish, it is still wiser than man's wisdom because God is perfectly wise. God is never, never mistaken. The whole story of Christ coming to meet with us is not about a God who is seeking to be worshipped by his subjects. It's about a, a parent who is seeking to be united with, with his children. It's not about a God who is wanting to play games with the people who only believe that they've got control over their lives. It's about a creator who has given their creation choice so that they can determine their own, their own existence. Because being created in his image can only be fully realized when we have the choice to create in partnership with him. But, but obviously having the choice to create in partnership with him also means that we have the ability to destroy creation instead of creating with him. And it's, it's not about us needing to, to earn approval from an uncaring master, but it's about a lover who, who will journey with us through all of our moments of life, teaching us over and over and over again how to love and, and how to be loved. The good news, says Paul, sounds, sounds weak to those who, who believe they're powerful because, you know, as people, we, we use people to gain more power. And, and I, we do this. We do this. If you've ever spoken down to somebody because of something, because, you know, they're a child or because they're old or because they are a different gender to you, they're a different race to you, um, or because they are rich or because they are poor, then, then you all know you have used people to, to gain power. We speak down to people so that we can feel powerful. But even in God's weakness, says Paul, he is more powerful than, than man's greatest power. God God doesn't need to speak down to us. He speaks straight, straight to us. God, God doesn't need to mince his words or to, or to play games or to use a lot of words that confuse us. The sword of his word is, is sharp. The arrow is, is polished. There, there is a clear invitation and that invitation is extended by Christ and the evidence of that invitation is Christ. That's the good news. The kingdom of heaven has been opened. The kingdom of heaven is available to all of us. And the invitation to us is clear. Come, come home. And that good news that Jesus is preaching, he is preaching it to the poor. And when we speak of the poor, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. It is not those who have no money. It is those who know how much they need God, because those are the ones who will find God. Blessed are those who cry out for God because they are the ones who, who will want to receive God. Blessed are those who are living in his love. Blessed are those who are, who are in the right place to receive his favor because they, they will receive it. God's love is for all people. His grace is for all people. His favor is for all people. His kindness is for all people. His blessing is for all people. But not all people will receive it because not all people will choose to let go of of what they already have in order to receive what God has for them. Not all people will follow where God is leading to be a part of the blessing 
of what God is doing. Not, not all people are willing to be empowered by God for the work of love. Not everybody is willing to be taught by God. Not everybody is willing to be rebuked by God. Not everybody is willing to be corrected by God. Not everybody is willing to be trained by God so that they can live fully into the gift of being co-creators with God. Not everybody knows how much they need God. And so blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And to those who know how much they need God, hear, hear the good news. The kingdom of God is, is available. God is calling you to come home. God is calling you to dwell in his glory. Christ needed to give himself over to death in, in order to defeat it. Christ needed to give himself over to death in order to offer us life. We need to give ourselves over to Christ in order to blossom into the person that we were created to be, in order to live into the wonder of being created in, in God's image. Will you let the old person go so that you can embrace the new person that you are in Christ? Repent and hear the good news. The kingdom of God is available to all of God's creation. And this is the good news that Christ has come to preach. Pray with me. Lord God, we carry so much baggage with us and we, and we try to make ourselves worthy of your love. We build so many walls between ourselves and you. We, we make being loved by you so complicated for ourselves and for others. Lord God, you know how much we need you, Lord Jesus. And so we, we ask that you would soften our hearts to, to your invitation. Open our hearts, Lord, to your gift of love. Open our world to your gift of life. Give us the courage once again to put aside all of our pride, our, our arrogance, our need to know better than you. Help us, Lord, to trust you. Help us to trust in the purity and the simplicity of your invitation, the invitation you extend to us. We pray this, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.